Hello, I am Muipu, and I am stuck in the world of Minecraft. And because I'm stuck, the only way for me to get out is to try to figure out how this world works. So in this episode, we're going to start with the basics. We're going to start with what time means here. So in order for me to do any kind of experiment, testing how things work, going and checking how fast something falls or moves, I need to have the concept of time. Now you'd think that I might be able to test with seconds, like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, but as we've established, I have no fingers. And I also don't have any watch on me or a clock, so that would be pretty difficult to do. And the seconds that we're talking about are your world's time. I'm not entirely sure this is how time works inside my universe right now. So I need to figure out how time works here and how I am going to be able to count it and account for it whenever I'm going to do any other experiment. So when you think about how we count time in the real world, you would kind of expect that people start out with something that is a base of 10, right? Because, unlike me, people in the real world have fingers, and usually 10 of them. A lot of our counts are base 10. 10, 20, 30, everything is 10 based, because we count with our fingers. But time isn't really base 10, is it? Time is base 12. We have 24 hours a day, we have 60 minutes in an each hour, and we have 60 seconds in each minute. Well, where did that come from? There are actually a couple of theories where this came from, but one of the most notable ones are the Egyptians. So the Egyptians used to calculate their times with a sundial. And let me see if I can create a little sundial here. I have my trusty cobblestone. Let's create a sundial. All right. So if we do a sundial and, uh-oh, well, ouch. All right. We have a sundial here. The sundial shows you the location of the sun, right, in the sky, where is it, right here, by its shadow. So it creates a shadow, and you can calculate the shadow position and know what the time is. Now, the Egyptians used this method to calculate the time, but instead of dividing that circle that was created to 10, like their fingers, they decided to divide it by 12. And the reason is that when you look at the sky throughout the year, there are 12 lunar cycles. So they decided that they will divide their entire circle by 12. And in fact, they didn't quite use this type of sundial. They used a T-shape sundial, something like that. So I guess I could try and start with that. However, my current Minecraft universe, unfortunately, does not have ray tracing, which means there is no shadow here. Uh, as you can see, the sun is over there. And there's not really much of a shadow here to speak of. So I can't really tell where where the sun is during the day. So, hmm, a sundial won't really do anything for me inside Minecraft. Well, I guess that's not that terrible. Because if you think about it, even in real life, seconds aren't that accurate either. I mean... Even the mere fact that we have a leap second every couple of years is a telling factor. And it's actually correct. We measure time, even of experiments, with something a little smaller than seconds, either milliseconds, femtoseconds. And what happens when we need to be a lot more accurate than that? Well, we've discovered something called an atomic clock. So atomic clocks look at the transition of the electrons inside the atom, and I'm going to have a little link there, hello little sheep, to tell you, to explain exactly what that means. But essentially, we are using in the real world something that is super, super accurate, that we know will behave exactly the same way, no matter what, and gives us an accurate count, which is exactly what I need inside this world. So I can't trust the sun, and I don't have any atoms here. I mean, I guess I could start building something that may resemble... Uh, electrons around here, but they're not moving, and I can't really trust those. So my next step would be, is there anything inside the Minecraft universe that can give me the same effect? 
something that no matter what goes in a cycle on and on, no matter where it is and how much time passes and can always give me an accurate interval. If I can find that, then I can use it to count. Huh, it's nighttime. Well, it seems like the sign dial isn't very effective at night. Which begs the question, what did the Egyptians do? Aha, well, in fact, during the night, they used the time division by the stars. So if we look up, there are stars here, but it's really going to be very difficult to try and figure out how stars appear and reappear and count by them. But the Egyptians, that's what they did. They counted the stars. So they had 12 hours during the day and 12 hours during the night. Now, ironically, those hours were not necessarily the same length. They ended up being the same length later when we got into mathematics and, you know, proper experimentation. But initially, they weren't really the same length. But it didn't really matter because what matters is consistency. If I tell you that I'm going to come over in one hour and you are at the same time as me, you know exactly when I'll be there. So it was kind of okay for them. But it's definitely not okay for me. So I'm going to have to find a better way to count time. And I'm going to use the analogy of atomic clocks in order to do it. But looking at my lovely experimentation area, even though I lit it up completely, there are a couple of monsters over there. So mm, I'm going to like sleep and uh, I'll come back when it's daytime. So I'm back here in my experimentation area. Obviously the sign dial was not much of a success. But if we take the analogy of atomic clocks, we can actually build something really useful here. So we're gonna go with the concept of a redstone clock. And the idea of a redstone clock is that it's very predictable, which is what I need. So here's how it works really briefly. I'm going to leave a link for you to follow up if you need more information about what redstone clocks are, and there are multiple types of them. We're gonna use a really, really simple one. So the idea behind redstone is that it carries a sort of a current inside Minecraft. So if I have this line of redstone and I put some, I don't know, source of power, like a redstone lamp here or a torch, then it will be lit up and pass some sort of power through. And if I put a, uh, here, a redstone uh, lamp at the end of it, then you can see it's lit up. If I cut the power, it is off. So we have something here that is very similar to the real world's electrical currents. And this is very, very good because the keyword here that we need in order to measure time is predictability. So if I can find a way to make sure that I use something that is always acting the same way with the same predictable uh, cycles, then I could use that to measure my own time. This is exactly what we did in the real world with atomic clocks, where we know that they're very, very predictable and will remain so for, well, a longer time span than we probably care about right now. So what am I going to do with this? Well, here's, here's a really, really cool way to create a clock. So what we do here, there are uh, repeaters. So the idea of a redstone repeater is that it takes a pulse that goes in it and spits it out with some predictable delay. So you have this little um, uh, handle here, and this will be like one tick, and then two, it will be delayed for two ticks, and then delayed for three, and delayed for four. So you can control how fast a um, pulse goes through it. But it does mean that whatever current goes in here doesn't immediately pass through. There's a little bit of delay, and then it continues, which gives me a little bit of time to do a trick here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a very, very simple atomic clock. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a block here with this torch that lights up this uh, repeater. And then if I have another repeater going into that block, that repeater, when there's current in, will affect the current inside that block. Now, one cool thing about a redstone torch is that if it is connected to something that already has power, it shuts off. So what will happen here is that this uh, torch is on. It gives power to this repeater. We will connect this repeater to this repeater, which means it gives power. We'll transfer the power to this repeater, which is in turn light up this block, which will mean that this lamp is off. Well, if this lamp is off, this will be off too. This will be off too. But then this is off now, so the lamp will be on. So what we will create here is a cycle where 
the, the, the current is not really a steady current. It goes by pulses. And the pulses are always predictable, which is what we want. So let's see here. I'm going to connect these two together. And there we go. So here we go. We have blinking lights here. We have some really predictable way to have like pulses. And if I stick a lamp on top here, see, it goes on and off and on and off and on and off. And I can count that. So it will always go like this within the confines of my own universe right now. So if my universe has lag, this will be lag too. And if my universe is running in a different way, this will be impacted too because I am in a closed system and this is closed with me. So this will be a really, really good way for me to measure time. Now, there is a little problem here. It's a little fast. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, it could be counted, but it is a little fast. So it might be times where I want to slow it down a little bit. So let's say this could be my seconds and then maybe I need something to count a little slower. What I could do is either use the property of this repeater and then slow it down. Just choose a little slightly bigger delay. And as you can see now, it's a lot slower. Um, or I can add more repeaters here. So if I bring it back to be without delay and I add, uh, let's say one, two, and then back one, two, it has the similar effect of counting a lot slower. So you can control really the amount of ticks that happen, the amount of uh, tick tocky stuff, the time that I can measure um, with this clock. And this will remain exactly the same. Just keep on going, keep on going, will not change, will be always consistent, which is exactly what I need in order to measure my time in my universe. So I think that just in order to start out and to make sure that I'm always consistent, I'm going to start with a very basic clock like this. I'll know that this is the one that I always take with me. This is what I build every time that I want to measure something. It's true that it's a little fast. If I see that I need a slower one, then maybe I'll consider making it a little longer with the tick count. Um, as long as I know that whatever experiment I do, I count according to what kind of clock I'm using, I can have results that are consistent and can tell me exactly what's going on in my own universe. So here we have it. We can measure time. We have a way to measure time. I can even start counting how many times I can jump within the given ticks that my clock is giving me. So the only question right now really is a very ex existential one. What do I call these ticks? They're not seconds. I can't really call them ticks because Minecraft has already a concept of ticks, but those are in the code. Those are things that the programmers of my universe decided to put in to see how the world works. And they're very, very, very fast. Too fast for me to notice while I play. So I don't know. I need to find an equivalent word for the seconds in Tide Minecraft. Maybe craft seconds. Hmm. I'll start with that. But if any of you has any ideas, please let me know in the comments. Do you have any idea of how to call this new unit? Because this is how we start, everyone. That's how we do science. We have our time set up. So we finally have our concept of time. This means so many things can happen now. I can start testing and looking around and maybe starting to figure out this block existence that I need to figure out in order to get out of here. But before I go, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. You see, I'm back here in my prophecy room and look what there's behind me. There's a hidden door. So let's open it. Ooh, what is behind here? I'm kind of worried. Ooh, what is this room? <gasps> oh, well, that's a nice little room. Look at this sofa. Well, I guess I can sit here. What is that? That looks like a TV or... Ooh, that ominous sound. Well... Let's hope it doesn't say anything about this thing, because this is exciting. Let's see what I can see here. <gasps> Ooh. So it turns out I can see your questions on my videos. This is so cool. Please take the time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. These are the ways where I can make sure that I'm making the best videos ever while trying to figure out how to get out of here. So with that said, hmm, I think I might like chill out in the sofa here see if i can watch netflix or something until next time